Hi, it's Luke Bowman here. Welcome to my second video for the amazing track Candle Power by Steve Vai. Hopefully you've already seen my original video from a couple of weeks ago where I cover the first minute. I've had quite a lot of requests to do the rest of the song, so I'm going to cover that in this video, joint shifting included. I had just finished my transcription on Wednesday when I saw Steve Vai announce that he's actually released his own transcription of this. So you can go and download his official transcription tablature and have a look at that. I would certainly recommend doing that. The chances are it is a bit more accurate than mine. But I thought it was still worth going ahead with the lesson because we can slow it down and take each part bit by bit and show you exactly what's going on. So I apologise for any mistakes or differences that you do find versus his original transcription. Hopefully this will be enough to help you learn the track. I haven't done a playthrough for it. I've transcribed it for me to learn it and be able to play it all up to speed in a performance. It would take me too long. But we will go through each bar. I'll show you what's being played and how to do it. Also at the end of the video I've included kind of like a screenshot from my Guitar Pro software so you can actually see the tablature being played. So you can always use that, slow it down using the YouTube facility and you can see how it's being played in time. You can jump ahead to that at any point using the links below. If that is useful let me know, it's something I might do for future videos as well. There's a lot to cover in this video, there's some very difficult parts to play. So chances are this is going to be a long video, feel free to skip ahead again using the links below. I will go through things as quickly as possible. You can rewind, use the tablature, etc. if you need to catch up on things. Okay, so let's get zoomed in and we'll start the lesson. So as I mentioned, there are some technically very difficult parts in this. I haven't learned them up to speed as yet, so I will be playing them slowly and I find them very challenging indeed. There's some incredibly clever playing in here. So what I'm going to do is take each bar at a time, go through it relatively quickly. Please rewind, use the tabs. Um, also watch Steve's video, it's great to watch Steve playing on his YouTube video, which you can slow down as well using the facility on there which is very handy to see how he's playing and fingering things. So I've called this part slippery chords which will become self-evident in a moment. As with the previous parts try and keep notes ringing through as much as possible. Not sure I've notated it exactly right, I've put a lot of tied notes in there um, but if you look at the tablet you can see the notes you're playing where you can leave them ringing through to give that kind of silky smooth sound. Okay so the very end of bar 23 we start off by playing 12th fret on your G string, 10th fret on your B string, quite quickly. And again, leave these ringing through. I'm fingering like this for a reason. Steve fingers it like this, I think, in the video. But I find it difficult when we then move up. There are a lot of big stretches in here, so you finger it the way that is most comfortable for you. So we're starting off 12, 10, and then 8th fret on your top E string. And you leave all of those ringing through. And then what you can do is slide that whole thing up to 17th fret, 15th fret, and 12th fret. So it goes like that. Now that's a big slide, and especially in this position. Um, I think Steve's fingering like this, but he has very big hands. Okay, so once we're up here, that's ringing through. You then hit the 12th fret, 15th fret, and 17th fret, so you're coming back down that. In terms of chords, they are all related to the F major. So kind of adding the, the ninth or the second. Here you're adding the major seventh and the thirteenth to the F. So you come back down and then slide on your G and B string down to the fourteenth and thirteenth fret. Like that and then add the 10th fret on your top E string. So again, part of the F major chord, you're adding the 6th or the 13th. So I'll try and do it slowly. Back down 13th, 14th again, keep it all ringing on. Slide the 14th down to the 12th, then 10th fret on your B, 8th fret on your E, 10th fret on your B. And that's that first bar. Something like that. But probably at twice the speed. Okay, the next bar, bass moves to the C sharp. So starting off the 12th fret, G string, 13th fret B, 9th fret on the E. Quite a clash going on, so you've got the major 7th of the C sharp. And then the fifth, the bass, playing the C sharp. Let all those notes ring out. And then 
and slide from the 12th fret down to the 10th on your G. Nice easy bit for a change, no stretch. 8th fret on your B and E strings, back down. And then from the 10th fret you're sliding down to the 6th fret. 6th fret on your B. 3rd fret on your top E. And then we'll leave that there because the next bit leads into the next part. So that bar goes something like that. Okay, next bar, playing it over the C, so it's all related to this C major chord. So it starts off at the previous bar with a pickup, 5 6 on your G and B strings, and you're going to add the third fret on your top E string. So it's a bit like a C sus4 chord. And then leave it ringing through and then slide that all the way up to 10, 11, 8. So it sounds like that. And we're going to move up. 6th fret on your top E, 6th fret on your B, 8th fret on your G, 8th fret on your D string. Still over that C. And you're going to slide that whole chord down to 5, 5, 3, 3. Get rid of the pick, Luke. Just realised I was using a pick. It's very wrong of me, so I've thrown it away. No pick in this song. So we go. And then five, three, three, six. Fifth fret on your D string. So that's fifth fret on your G, third fret on your B and E, sixth fret on your B, and then fifth fret on your D string. So that whole bar. Final bar of this section, bass has gone to the G sharp. So we start off, 6th fret on your D, open G, to keep ringing, 3rd fret on your E string, 6th fret on your B string. And then slide down from the 6th fret to the 3rd, open G again, 1st fret on your B, open G, and then the 3rd fret, but you want to move to your 2nd finger here. So you're going to go open G again, 3rd fret on your top E, and then 4th fret on your B string. So you need to move that finger around, so when you've slid down, to be able to get this, this note in here. So that bar... Do listen to the original or have a listen through to the Guitar Pro version I've got at the end of this video so that you can hear the exact timings of this, but those are the notes to play. Okay, so that first section, slippery chords, quite challenging, a lot of slippery chords moving around, up and down the neck, a lot of big stretches. So even before we start with joint shifting, it's going to hurt your hand. Okay, so the next section, we get into the first part of the joint shifting. Let's take a look at that. Okay then, joint shifting. Steve's coined this phrase because you are really having to shift your joints around in your fingers to play some of this. He has come out and admitted that this is not a new technique. This is something that country players have been doing for many years. I remember back in the 80s as a kid seeing a guy called Jerry Donahue playing live and it just blew my mind away if you can get hold of any of his recordings or videos of him playing. Essentially what we're doing in joint shifting is you are bending strings but more than one string at a time and also perhaps at different intervals as well, which will become clear as we go through it. But if you think, sometimes if you're playing an A, you might bend up like that. Bend up the minor third to the major third. So there's a lot of that kind of thing going on, bending up. But for this joint shifting or the double bending, if you were to then bend a second note, and make the chords. I would agree with what Steve says is that I haven't heard anybody really using it in the same style that he's using it. Certainly not in a rock kind of instrumental. Definitely putting his own stamp on this technique. But it is something that's been around a while and it is very difficult to do. It really does hurt the fingers. I'm sure you've seen the pictures of Steve's fingers after he recorded this. I'll be honest, I can't do it very well. I'm still learning it. 
I just finished this transcription a few days ago and I'm just learning it myself so I will try and show you how to do it or how what he's doing but please use the tab look at the video of him slow it down so you can see exactly what he's doing in most cases what he's doing is he is bending up notes up into the chord or the chord extension that he is looking for um, so if you're playing an A chord it might be you're bending up from a fret below that's just giving you a different kind of sound it's almost like a sliding kind of sound it sounds really cool so we'll take this bar by bar and let's see how it goes what I would say is you do need a solid tailed guitar if you've got a whammy bar or a floating trem as soon as you start bending notes it puts the other strings ever so slightly out of tune it's hard enough when your bridge isn't moving to do these bends and make it all sound in tune if you've got a whammy bar it's going to be very difficult indeed which is why Steve did it he's got an Ibanez with a fixed bridge instead of his usual gem okay but let's have a look at this first bar we've come down from the previous bar we finished off then going to put the third fret on your G string and then the third fret on your top E string leaving all those ringing through so and hit third fret on your A string second fret on your G and then this is the first part we're only doing one string to start with which is very nice you're bending that second fret up to the third fret now normally when we bend we bend that way this joint shifting you need to get used to bending the opposite way so bending down so you have got to leave that third fret ringing through and then release it and this is where it starts to get hard because our fingers aren't used to doing that like Steve mentions when he calls it joint shifting you're having to use the tips of your fingers very much and then bend and ouch that does hurt So bend it up and then release it. And then fourth fret on your B string. And then third fret with your first finger on your D string. Third fret on your B string. And do the same, bend it up half a step. Back down again. If you try and bend it the other way, it's very hard to either not mute the other string that you're playing or to make you hear how I'm bending this finger as well just automatically it's a lot easier to keep that rooted and pull the string away that way fifth fret on your G string and we're going to move up the first finger to the fourth fret which is going to the next phrase so this is I think played over an F in the bass so it's kind of an F chord, he's adding some extensions, bending the major third up there, adding the dominant seventh, the sixth up to the dominant seventh, back to the fifth. So it's all playing around with that kind of F major chord with some extensions on there and bending up notes to either into the chord or from extensions of that chord up to another note. So let me try and play that slowly, it's even harder slower because you've got to bend them for longer, so fingering wise, check how Steve's doing it. I'm not exactly sure I'm doing it the right way, I'm doing it what fits for me. Do it how it's comfortable for you. Okay, so into the next bar, we've got this fourth fret on the A string ringing through. We're then going to do fourth fret on the G string and bend it up a full tone back down again so you're bending so this is even further so it's an opposite bend again you're bending down the neck and release it keeping this ringing through and then hit the sixth fret on your top E string so you're trying to keep all these ringing through and then pull off to your open G string fourth fret pull it off so now we're going to bend up. All that's ringing now is this G string. 
bend up the fifth fret on your E string, a half a tone, and then put the sixth fret on your D string, but trying to keep that G ringing through. So what you're really getting is that. And this is over a C sharp. So, and then bend up the 4th fret on your G, just half a tone this time, and then hit the 8th fret on your E string. This one is difficult because it's quite a stretch. And then the open G string to finish. So this is a difficult bar. But that gives you an idea of what you're doing there, and it really does hurt the fingers. I'm not sure if you can see. I've got grooves all over my fingers just from doing this little bit here. The other problem with it is, if you don't get those bends right, or you're bending other notes, or hitting open strings that you shouldn't be, it sounds pretty awful. It is quite an atonal passage, so it isn't a melodically nice sounding bit, it's building up a bit of tension, but if you get it wrong it can sound dreadful so it needs a lot of practice. Take it slowly, be careful with your fingers, do some exercises on this to try and get the strength built up. Once you build those calluses up I guess it's going to be a lot easier. The next bar starts off, we still have these two notes ringing through, 8th fret on your top E and your open G in the previous bar. You're then going to add 6th fret on your A string and then on your 7th fret on your D, you're starting with it already bent up and re releasing it half a tone. So you've got these ringing through like that. Then we're going to move position a little bit. Ninth fret on your B string, half, up, half a step, and then the seventh fret on your G, up half a step. It's not easy to keep those strings from hitting each other. So the opening of that bar, and then ninth fret on your A string, you're starting again with it bent up a full tone, hit the tenth fret on your E while you're releasing it. Finishing off with a half fret bend on the seventh fret of your B string and the ninth fret of your A string up half a fret as well. So you're basically bending up to there. They're quite hard to play on their own as you're practicing to actually play it as part of the tune all in one go. It's quite mind blowing. So well done, Steve, on this and for all the other people who've covered it. Okay, and the final bar in this. So we've bent up that 9th fret half a tone, the 10th fret on your G string, and we're going to bend that up a whole tone to the G. So bend it up a whole tone, and hit the 10th fret on your E string, and then the 11th fret on your B string, and bend that up half a tone. And this is possibly the hardest part. Something like that. He's also adding a bit of a brato to it. Very difficult indeed. So that is the introduction to joint shifting. I'm off to put my hands in some cold water for a bit before we continue. But hopefully that gives you a flavour of how to play those passages. I am by no means an expert. I'm just trying to show you the notes that I believe are being played from listening to it and watching the video of Steve. Okay, have we recovered from that? Hopefully. I'm going to move on now to the next section, which is one of my favourites in the track. I'm calling Funky A Minor Blues. So we're using A minor pentatonic quite a bit here, and a lot of funky rhythms going on. What I would say through this is keep the notes short and snappy, nice and staccato. And again, we're using our fingers, so you're plucking it to get a bit of a snap on. I'm going to go through this bit quite quickly, because I think with the tablature it is relatively self-explanatory. What I would say at this point, very strangely, when I was finalising this, um, for some reason the track seems to slow down at this point very slightly. 
So the beginning of the track up till now has been at I think 79 beats per minute. It seems to slow down now to 78. I figured this out when I was working out the bit for the end of the video where I have my Guitar Pro tablature playing alongside the original track so you can hear the tablature versus what's being played and it just went out of time as I was doing it. I was, had to figure out what was happening and it does seem to slow down by one beat per minute. So we're starting now bar 31, third fret, bottom E, and we're on to the fifth fret. And then four, snappy, third fret's on your A string. And then a fifth one, which you're bending up ever so slightly. And then five, three, three, five, on your A to E string. So, Nice funky lick. Then carrying on in the same vein. So moving up, and minor pentatonic. So third fret on your bottom E, fifth fret, third fret on your A, fifth fret on your bottom E, and then fifth fret on your A, slide it straight up to the seventh fret. Fifth fret on D, seventh fret on your A, fifth fret on your G, seventh fret on your D string. Nice easy opening there. What I would say, a lot of these notes, Steve has an amazing vibrato. Can't do anything like him, he almost seems to do it in a circular motion. But lots of big wide vibrato on some of these notes where you're holding them. Okay, and then 8th fret on your B string. 7th fret, bend it up, back down on your G string. 5th fret on your G string, 7th fret on your D string. And then 5th fret on your G, slide down to the 4th fret. And then 5th fret, 3rd fret, 2nd fret, slide down on your D string. So Try and use your first finger there, unless you've got big hands like Steve. Because then you're going to keep this 2nd fret ring, ring, ringing through. And then hit the 5th fret on your B string. So. And then that's going to slide up to the 5th and 8th frets and back down to the 2nd and 5ths. So that bit. And then pull off to your open D string. And then hit the D on your 3rd fret B string. Other way of fingering that would be to slide down 2nd finger on your D, 5 to 3, and then pull off to the 2nd. Probably easier. Not sure what Steve's doing there. Check the video. You don't see. And then this little bit at the end, like that. Second fret, G string. First fret to B. Open E. Keep it ringing on. Slide up to the fourth and third frets. Keep that E ringing through, and then bend up. up the fourth fret half a tone and back down again so it's quite hard to do not hit the D string like that next part third fret to the fifth fret again hammer on on your bottom string three on your A string five on your E string five on your A then there's a kind of I can hear a, a third fret hanging on So, fifth fret, bend up half a tone, back down to the third fret, pull it off to the fifth fret, and then hit your open G string. It's all together. Like that. Keep that G string ringing if you can. So you're hammering on, open E, third fret on your E, fifth fret on your E, two third frets on your A string, back to the fifth fret. And then same again, but this time slide up from the fifth fret on your D to the seventh fret, and hit the fifth fret on 
on your D string. Back to the 7th fret on your E, and your D string pull off 7th fret to 5th fret, to the 7th fret on your A, and then up to vibrato, 5th fret on your G, to the 7th fret on your D. Something like that to make it nice and snappy, plenty of vibrato. Okay, the next one, the great lick, very hard to play at speed, but all based again on the A minor pentatonic. It's very interesting to see how Steve does this rhythmically and what notes he's using, because he's making a making an A minor pentatonic sound quite exciting, which is isn't always easy to do. Starting off again, third fret, fifth fret on your bottom E, third fret on your A, fifth fret on your E. 5-3 on your A, back to the E string, 5th fret. Then sliding up. Next passage, so sliding up 5th fret to the 7th fret on your A, 5th fret on D. Slide back down 7th fret to the 5th fret on your A, 7th fret to the 5th fret on your D. 7th fret on your A string. So There's quite a similar pattern going on here, so then 5th fret on your G, 7-5 on your D, 7-5 on your G, 7th fret on your D string. And then finishing up. Fifth fret, B string. 7-5 on your G, 8-5 on your B, 7th fret on your G string, and then ending up 5th fret on your top E and your B string. Something like that. And then you're bending up, 8th fret on your B. Tone. Great little lick. Okay, next part. So eighth fret on your top E and your B, and then keep those ringing on. And bend up seventh fret on your G. Put the tone back down. Fifth fret, seventh fret on your D, and then fourth fret on your B string. Bend it up half a tone into the next bar. So you're keeping that seventh fret ringing through. And then slide your seventh fret down to the fifth fret. So, sounds like that. But keep, keep these notes ringing through. So the seventh fret, and then the fourth fret. So you get that kind of sound. The second half of that bar, we're moving up to the 14th fret on your D and G, 12th fret on your B, and then your open E string. Then 14, 12 on your B, 14th back on your D, and then 12th back on your G, leaving as much ringing through as you can. And then the next part, same start again. And then we're going to slide up with the second finger to the 14th fret, and then 12th fret on your B string, and then you're going to and you're going to tap onto the 17th fret of your D string with your right hand. So. Which is allowing Steve to play that G at the same time as the A here. Good finger it like that if you don't want to tap it on. And then the final bar of this section, starting off with the 11th fret on your G, 8th fret on your B string, and then your open E. So leave all those running through. Slide down. 
the seventh fret from the eleventh. Seventh fret of your G, seventh fret of your B, open E, seventh fret on your B, G, B, and then slide it up on your G string to the ninth fret. So So that's that section finished, then we move into the next joint shifting section. Okay, so the second joint shifting section, which I personally didn't find quite as difficult, but it's still very hard. First bar goes a bit like this. But starting off with your 4th fret, your D string, bending it upwards this time, half a tone, so up to the G. Then you're hitting the open G after it, so you can tell whether you've got it in tune or not. Keep those ringing through, hit the second fret on your B, and bend that downwards half a tone as well. So, so you're kind of bending up that G, G chord. I've let go, but keep them ringing through, and then hit the fourth fret fourth finger of your G string. Then hit the fourth fret, which you've already got bent up once more, and bend it down. And hit the open E string. As we'd say in Family Guy, Something like that. So then we're going to move to the 6th fret to try and keep that E ringing through. 6th fret on your G string. Bend it up half a tone. Hit the 5th fret on your B. And the 7th fret on your E. And then you're going to hit the 7th fret on your B. Bend that up half a tone. Try and keep this B ringing through on the top. So you're going to have to bend that as that way as well as the 6th fret. So that bar, the next bar, that 7th fret is ringing through, 7th fret on your G string, bend it up, full tone and back down again, like that, probably use this with your 3rd finger and bend it downwards again, and stretch up. String. If you can use your second finger, it makes the stretch easier, but it's a lot harder on your second finger. Then we're going 9th fret on your D string, 6th fret on your G string, and bend the 6th fret up half. The first time, and stop, and then again. So. for the next phrase. So that bar finishing off, bend that 8th fret up half a tone, pushing upwards, 7th fret on your G, 9th fret on your B, and bend that up half a tone as well. So you're ending up with It's so hard to do to keep them all in tune, especially when your fingers are throbbing. That's how it goes. I'm going to move down to the fourth frets on your D, G, and B strings. Bend them up, all three strings, half a tone, back down. Might be easier for you to use your fourth finger, and then push them all up. Sounds like that and then pull off second fret, second fret of your E string. Second fret of your E string to the open E, fourth fret of your B, fourth fret of your G. 
4th fret of your D, slide up to the 5th fret. Just keep that 5th fret ringing through, 4th fret of your B string, and then bend that up a full tone and back down again, and then back up. And hit your top E string. fret of your B string, 4th fret of your B string, hit it already bent, I'm not sure how Steve's fingering that, that's the way I'm kind of doing it, so you're bending up this 4th fret, full tone, hitting the 5th fret as you're releasing it, and then sliding that 5th fret down to the 4th fret as well, so you're kind of going That's the sound you're looking for. Not easy to do at all. And then you're finishing off. This is all over a B chord, all over a B in the bass. So you're kind of bending up at the end there. Fourth fret's ringing through, and you've slid down. Bending that second fret of your G string up to the fourth fret. Hopefully that makes sense. I can't actually play much of it anymore because my fingers are about to drop off. But that is the end of that joint shifting section. The next bar is a great little lick. I absolutely love this. Um, that is essentially the melody. But what Steve's doing is he's sliding up. Keeping the notes ringing through, and I think that sounds so cool. It's something I'm going to start developing a bit in my playing. Come up with some similar licks. So we're starting off. Um, probably best to start with your 4th finger, 5th fret of your D string. Slide up from the 5th to the 7th. Then 4th fret of your G string. And slide up to the 5th fret. But keeping this ringing through. Keep it all ringing through, slide up. 5th to the Side up 7th to the 9th on your D, and 5th to the 7th on your G, and then slide up 9th to 10th on your D, 7th to the 9th on your G string, and then back to the 10th fret, give it that bit of vibrato, so it's a really cool lick. We're now moving into the final part of this middle piece, what I'm calling funky B blues. So similar to earlier, we're playing some, some funky licks, but this time using the B minor pentatonic. And then we end up with a fantastic lick at the end. We're starting off this first bar. Kind of like that. Second fret in D, hammer on to the fourth fret. Second fret on your G. Four times, but with rests between them. Bit of a scratch, I think. It's almost as if you're going back to that fourth fret. And then you do go back to the fourth fret on the D string. Second fret on your G. Finish up on the fourth fret of your B. Then hammer on again, second to fourth on your D, second on your G, fourth on your D, second fret on your B, finish up, fourth fret on the G. Great sounding lick. And then similar vein in the next part. So hammer on, second fret to the fourth on your D, second fret on your G, back to fourth fret on your D. Roll across, 4th fret on your B, off to the 2nd fret on your G, and 2nd fret on your B string, and then 4th fret on your G, and 5th fret on your top E, it's a bit of a jump there. Then down to the 2nd fret on your B string, 4th fret on your B, bend it up, half a tone and back down and pull off to the 2nd fret in the open string. And then 4th 
fourth fret on your G, fourth fret on your E. Second fret on your G, bend it up, quarter tone or so, and end up on the fourth fret of your D string. Next part. Second fret again on your D string, hammer on to the fourth. Second fret on your G, fourth fret on D, four, two, on your G, fourth fret on your D string, and then fifth fret on your G, slide up to the sixth fret. So, back to the fourth fret on your D. Fifth fret on your B string, pull off to the fourth fret. Four frets on your G and D string. And then add the seventh fret on your top two strings. And then slide it down. So top string, seventh, sixth, fifth. It's that bit. Finishing off 2nd fret on your G, come on to the 4th fret, 2nd fret on your B, 4-2 on your G, 4th fret on your D, and 2nd fret on your G, bending it up half a tone and back down. More great little funky blues licks in there. Next part, hammer on 2nd to the 4th fret on your G string, 2nd fret on your B, 4th fret on your G, pull off 4th fret, 2nd fret on your B, back to the 4th fret on your G and then slide up from the 6th to the 7th fret on your B string down to the 4th fret on your D that 5th fret on the B string, pull it off to the 4, 4, 4 then add 6th and 7th frets on your G and B string so you're sliding up That, and then you're sliding down two frets so it's kind of echoing the previous bar and what it's doing here so you're finishing off second on your G fourth on your G second on your B four two on your G fourth fret on your D and then fourth fret on your B string bend up half a tone and back down again Next bar, 5th fret on your B again, pull off to the 4th fret, and then roll across to the 4th fret on your G and D strings, and you're going to hit the 6th fret on your G, slide it up to the 11th fret, hit the 9th fret on your D, and then do the same thing up here, so 10th fret on your B, pull off to the 9th, and then 9th on your G and D strings. So. Fret again, slide it down to the fourth fret on your G string. Second fret on your D string, 4 2 on your B string, second fret on your G and D strings, and fourth fret on your G string. Bend it up and down again. So, all those bars are quite similar in terms of the rhythm and the way they're playing out, kind of echoing each other. Next bar starts back up here, tenth fret, just as we just did, tenth fret on your B, off to the ninth, and then ninth on your G and D. And then the eleventh fret on your G string, and slide that up to the sixteenth fret. So instead of sliding down the octave to here, we've slid up. And we play the same as we did down there. So fourteenth fret on your D. 16, 14 on your B, 14 on your G, 14 on your D, 16th fret on your G string. So together, and slide all the way down the octave to the 4th fret on your G, 2nd fret on your D string, 
then 4th fret pulling off to the 2nd fret on your G, 2nd fret on your D, 2nd fret on your A, finishing up on the 4th fret of your D string. Again, a very similar kind of bar in the way it's constructed. And then we're finishing off with this monster lick, which I will one day play fast. So slowly this lick goes. So we're starting off, open E, second fret on your A, fourth fret on your D. Then exactly the same across the string. So open A, second fret and fourth fret. Play this quickly, I would say thumb, index and middle finger. If you're going to have any chance of getting it anywhere near the speed it is on the, the original recording. And we go to 2, 4, 6. So all this next part is on your A, D and G string. 2nd fret, 4th fret, 6th fret. And you're just going to keep moving the same pattern up. 2 frets this time. 4, 6, 8. Move it up 1 fret next time. 5, 7, 9. 2 frets. 7, 9, 11. Two more frets, 9, 11, 13. Two more frets, 11, 13, 15. Okay, so. Then we're going to jump across the next three strings and we're going to go 9, 11, 12 on your D, G, B strings. Move it up two frets. 11, 13, 14. Then we're going to go 9, 12, 12 on your G, B, and E strings. Finishing up 11, 14, 14, so up two frets again. So, the, to play this with speed, I think what you need to do is just look at the pattern that's been played and get used to which frets you're playing that pattern on and move it as quickly as you can. What I would also suggest is to mute it as much as you can with your right hand. It's very fast, you don't want extra notes running through. Again, listen to the original recording, that's still probably only half the speed. It's an insanely fast lick and not easy to play, but it sounds amazing. Okay, so we're ending up here. And then what you need to do is then add the 13th fret on your G string and the 11th fret on your D string. This chord here or an F sharp. If you look at the video, Steve stays there, but you can see his foot moving, he's using his whammy pedal. And what that whammy pedal does, if you've seen those, I'm assuming he's using the Digitech whammy pedal. There's a similar functionality, I know, in the Helix and probably lots of other models as well. You hit it, you press it down, and it shifts the pitch for you. What I've done on the transcription is to actually show where it's moving to. So the first time it's moving up to here. So if you have a whammy pedal, it's kind of moving up a fifth. And then back down. And then it's dropping at a semitone. So 10, 12, 13, 13. And then moving it up a fifth again. To 17, 19, 20, 20 back up a fret, back to the original position, back up to the 21st fret, so up the 5th, down a fret, and sliding it down. See the video, it's just, because he's using the whammy pedal. It's very hard to actually play it without the whammy pedal, so I would suggest just leaving it there and sliding down if you don't have the whammy. going something like that but it sounds pretty horrible if you're not using the whammy pedal. After that he then goes back into a part that's very similar to what we did in the first video so that first minute. It's not exactly the same there's a couple of small changes rhythmically but this has been a very long video my fingers are sore I'm sure yours are as well. I think you have enough with the original video and the tablature to be able to go through and work that out. It's kind of like a condensed version. So it does that lick a few times and then we go to the... 
So towards this end bit, there's a bit of a rile goes on, it slows itself right down and finishes with that lick. Using his whammy pedal again. And that's the end. But I think you can work that out with the tablet to yourself. That bit at the end again, I think he stays on the seventh fret and then just puts it up a fifth on the whammy pedal. But you can slide it up there. Okay, a lot of stuff in there. What I would suggest, use the links below to be able to jump between the various sections, take it bar by bar and do it over a period of time and build the speed up on it. But there is some phenomenal playing from Steve on this and some great licks in there to learn. Okay, so that's the end of the video. What I'm going to do now is play through the screenshot of my Guitar Pro tablature um, alongside Steve's. So I think the tablature was panned to the left, Steve's original recording is panned to the right. Hope he doesn't mind me using it. What you can do is use the YouTube functionality again to slow the speed down. It might just be useful for you to be able to work along with it and see how the tablature is actually working in terms of the rhythms, especially for those fast parts and for the joint shifting. But I hope you've got something out of these two lessons. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you soon with some more videos. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.